Hello, hi, it's Philip Carcom. This is Tea with a Druid, 186, brought to you by the Order of Bards of Eights and Druids. And welcome this evening, and welcome if you're watching a recording of this later. And let's see who we've got here. We've got all sorts of people coming from Denmark and North Germany. Gosh, greetings from Smoky Towers in New Mexico, where almost the whole Western US is on fire. And Mexico, hello from Mexico, Colorado, Derby, Taiwan, great to see you. Australia, uh, Georgia, USA, um, and southern Spain and Washington and Wisconsin, California. Good to see everybody, good to see everybody. So I've had an interesting email that I'd like to share with you, and I thought we could explore this together because in this email, uh, a question is being asked that applies to any of us, I think, who are following a spiritual way. And this is addressed particularly to Druid spirituality, but it could apply to any spirituality, to nature spirituality in general, for instance. And it goes like this. For some time now, I've been thinking about how to live Druidry truly. I mean, I have studied all three of the Obod grades, and what is meant by that is the in the order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids, we have three levels of study. Bard, Ovate, and Druid. So I have studied all three Obod grades, and I know there is this spark in me, this spiritual seed, but I find it very hard to really live it in everyday life. The world we live in is such a rational, success-based society. I have a job, a mortgage, obligations, etc. But in all this rationality, how can I be sincere in a spiritual way? Otherwise, I'm concerned it might just fade away. So, really, really interesting question. And here are the ideas you might have some responses to, but let me just share with you some ideas I've had about this, which is, of course, that every individual is different, with different needs at a different place on their soul journey. And one of the problems of the established religions, perhaps, you might argue, I don't know if this is true or not, but you could argue, is that it tends to offer a one-size-fits-all approach. And Druidry um, is an approach that uh, can, be, can be accessed in all sorts of different ways. So Christian Druids and agnostic Druids and atheist Druids and pagan Druids and polytheistic Druids and so on. Uh, so people with different theologies, different understandings, different interests. Some people are really interested in the historical side, the archaeological side. Uh, other people are interested, treat their druidry as a religion. Other people treat it as a philosophy and so on. And I, I think a good analogy is that with druidry, you're not in the restaurant, you're in the kitchen. So there are these various ingredients, uh, ingredients animal law, plant law, star law, weather law, uh, an understanding about bardistry, but uh, narrative and biography and store the power of story, uh, the power of the R when opening to your inspiration and so on. And you weave these ingredients together in a way that works for you at any one time. So each of us are individual. So it's difficult to answer a question like that uh, without addressing a particular individual rather than making generalizations. But in addition to each of us being individuals, <clears throat> At any given moment in time, I think our needs may well differ too. So what you need in the winter time, this coming winter, may be different from what you needed last winter or what you might need this summer. What you need in your 50s, your 60s, your 40s, your 20s is going to be different too. So... You might say, well, are you evading the question and saying, well, there isn't really an answer to this? Well, here's some ideas. The one, one, one idea I suppose you could categorize as a, as a general concept, which is 
that as you study a spiritual path or spirituality in general, rather than confining it to any one path, but just think about the big questions in life, ask yourself the big questions and follow practices like meditation and celebrating the seasonal festivals and so on. Um, and if, if you're following Druidry, you're also following ideas about the Arwen, looking at animal law and plant law and so on, and taking the path of the Bard, the Ovate and the Druid. All these are engaging your rational mind and your intellect, but they're also engaging other aspects of your being. And there's a process that's, that's known in psychology as the progressive relegation to subconscious function. And what that means in, in, in simple terms is the best analogy is, is when you learn to drive. So when you, when you start off learning to drive, you have to be really conscious of what you're doing, putting the car in gear and using the clutch and uh, you know, how you use the indicators and so on. And then it, as you become familiar with it and as you do more and more of it, it becomes progressively relegated to subconscious function. In other words, you think less and less about it until you know that funny sensation when you arrive back home after a long drive and you and you think, well, how did you know I was listening to the radio? You know, you can't even remember necessarily the kind of details of the journey because you just whisked along and you were doing everything correctly, but it was uh, mainly subconscious. So so I think you can apply the same idea to spirituality, is that if you absorb the ideas of a spiritual way and you live them, at one level it becomes second nature, it becomes part of the way you are in the world, part of your perspective. You've moved from one particular viewpoint, one particular place on the hillside, looking out on life, to another place on the hillside. You've, you've got, you see things in a different way, perhaps you feel in a different way, so much so that it feels natural and, and you may even think that you haven't made that movement. So in this, this uh, member of the order who writes, you know, I'm concerned about it fading away. Well, uh, maybe it won't, maybe it can't fade away because you've taken such a journey, you're actually in a different uh, place and that there's nothing you need to hold on to with any kind of tenacity, because at some level it's built into who you are now and the way you, you feel and understand uh, life. So this is some um, uh, general ideas. Here's, here's another one. Um, feel into where you are at home and burrow deeper. Feel into the way you are at home and burrow deeper. So the things that make you feel at home in the world, listening to birdsong, being outside, being inside, curling up by the fire, listening to music, uh, what, what makes you feel good in your skin and at home in the world? And whatever that is, follow that and burrow deeper. And then here's the opposite idea. Feel where you don't feel at home and step deeper into the feeling. So this requires a bit more courage. It's a kind of perhaps more challenging and uh, subtler sort of process. But where are those growing points? Where do you not feel at home, and what's that about? Is that do you need to do you need to just back away from that, or is it something about dropping into the uncertainty and the discomfort of those feelings, and sitting with that discomfort and that uncertainty, but opening yourself to the possibilities of that? Take, take a specific example, because druids are really into creativity and being creative. You might say, well, the creative process is great. Oh, if only I had more time to be creative. But if you've ever spent time being creative, you'll know that there's a way in which you feel like you're coming home. Ah, at last I've got time to write. At last I've got time to, to make the thing with my creativity. And that's great. But there's also the opposite feeling, the spooky feeling that it's really uncomfortable being in this place of creativity. Completely the opposite feeling. 
because it's so much easier just to sit back and open another beer. It's so much easier not to be creative because then you don't have to wrestle with the demons and the voices that tell you that there's no point in doing this or the R when, when it doesn't arrive or it seems to be arriving and then it doesn't quite make it. You know, all, all the challenges that creativity bring, including a sense of physical discomfort. And tell me, you, you know, it'd be interesting to write, write down if you've, if you've experienced that, you know, maybe not everybody experiences this, but there's, a very peculiar feeling I sometimes get, and I, I know other creative people do, I'm sure, I think, um, which is physically uncomfortable. It's sometimes it's the best thing in the world and it feels physically great as you get the sense of flow and you're typing away or writing or speaking or whatever it is. And then the other times where, where, which are literally physically uncomfortable. And if you get that, do, do say so in the chat. Um, but here's the thing about this idea of feel where you don't feel at home and step deeper into the feeling. What I've learned is that if I can stay with that feeling of discomfort rather than running away and think, oh, to hell with this, I'm going to go and watch the television. But if I stay with it, then it changes. Something changes sometimes. And the creativity starts to flow. And it was just like a, a log that got jammed in the stream and it was really uncomfortable and then it flows. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, so um, physically restless, somebody says, yeah. Sitting down to write feels so good, but then I can't sit still to do the work. Gosh, I know that so well. Gosh, I know that so well. I've tried everything. I've tried, you know, walking. I think, oh, I can't sit still. It's kind of uh, here. So I'll go for a walk and try to dictate the, the piece into my phone while I'm walking up on the hills. You know, that kind of doesn't always work. It wouldn't. usually doesn't work either, actually, for me. Um, so I do my best work while ranting against things. Thank you. Thank you. I remember one of the most enjoyable teas I did was when I'd been to see that awful musical. What's it called? Les Miserables, the miserable musical. And it was so awful. I just ranted uh, in a tea with a druid and it was it felt so good, I have to say. Um, so. So. Um, Alan, Alan, what are you saying here? It feels like being on a roller coaster right before it crests the highest part. And then the rush of creativity hits. That's right. And sometimes you're kind of getting up to that part is really uncomfortable. You stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. And then woof, down you go. Exactly. The coup de foudre. Here we go. Leo, the ritual of setting up paints and canvas, the waiting for the coup de foudre, which means the, the clap of thunder to hit. And I can make shapes. Absolutely. Louisa Lilly, it feels like jumping off from a cliff symbolically, but then there is a honey warm feeling of goodness with creating an opening of moving forward into a sparkling place. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great. Yes. Gosh, lots of lovely, lovely things here. Um, Ooh, let's see, have a look here. Hello from Can. Wonderful subject. Lovely. So far, I agree with everything you've said. The idea of stepping deep into the feeling when it is not where you feel at home, quite challenging. Creativity is work. There are moments of euphoria. But yes, one example is forgetting my body or sacrificing it to continue working. Yeah. Sitting too long. Held my breath when working. That's another one where you catch, catch yourself holding your breath. Yes, absolutely. Um, Yes, thank you. Yeah, this is great. Um, so, okay. Um, sorry, Ashley. Um, oh, sorry, whoops, what, what was that? Uh, yes, I've had this. I do wood turning and general woodwork as my hobby. I've been known to pace up and down whilst trying to get between the wasting of time weighs heavy, heavier, not a good place. Yeah, 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 great. So, so, in this question that I got asked was like, how can I be sincere in a spiritual way? Because, you know, you learn the forms of a spirituality. OK, I'm a druid, so I practice, you know, I celebrate the eightfold wheel of the year and I'm supposed to love animals and plants and 
stars and stones and and do meditations often and i go outside a lot and all the rest of it and and and, and read poetry you know say you know and you you know that you know what you're supposed to be doing as it were and the question is how can i be sincere in a spiritual way you know and you know the bard william shakespeare to thine own self be true applies so much here is that it might be for you doing any of those things or all of those things but also being able to do none of those things to not beat yourself up about it and to say no i'm being true to myself and i don't feel like celebrating the summer solstice so i don't feel like meditating i don't feel like tuning into this that or the other i'm i'm feeling like i need to sit still or be quiet or what, what whatever it is to thine own self be true and so these are some general ideas just to just to, to make suggestions um and here's here and now here's a specific idea which is just to take up one specific thing because another funny thing can happen to you, particularly when you study Druidry, because it's so, at one level, it's not like other spiritualities that are quite prescriptive and tell you what to do. It's very wide open. And, 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 and so funnily enough, one of the challenges of following the, following the Druid way is you can have so many resources at your disposal, you don't quite know where to turn. So one of the ways to deal with that is just turn to one thing. Just turn to one aspect, one aspect of the law, animal law, plant law, stone law. So for me, for instance, if I turn to, uh, animal law is really helpful to me. So if I turn to animal law and I ask for what I need, and I use the Druid Animal Oracle, and at the stage I am in my journey now, I ask the animal oracle what I need, and and I get the blackbird. This is what is calling to me now, and and I feel very much at this moment uh, that I need one specific thing rather than feeding myself from the whole feast of what druidry can offer. I want to feed myself with one thing, which is the call of the blackbird. And you'll see the blackbird is beside the cave there. And there's um, there's a phrase from one of T.S. Eliot's poems, um, the, the Four Quartets, uh, seeking a, con a condition of complete simplicity. Stephanie and I had a wonderful weekend last weekend. We went to the opera in Holland Park in London. Uh, and then the next day we went to Ralph Fiennes in Cambridge, who was doing a solo performance of the four quartets. He's been doing it, it writes touring around the country. If you get a chance to see it, it's just stunning. It's, it's a one he's, you know, he's, he's reciting, he's not reciting, he's acting the four quartets of T.S. Eliot on his own on a set with an incredible set and lighting and so on. And it's just an absolute masterpiece. The poems are, a ma are masterpieces and his delivery is a masterpiece too. And uh, and then we went to see the incredible, the next day we drove from Cambridge to Ely at uh, the cathedral there has this incredible exhibition called Gaia, which is a huge planet Earth uh, that's vast. It's something like, I don't know, 75 feet wide. And it's hanging in the nave of the cathedral. It just looks incredible. I'll post some photographs up on, on my Instagram page um they're just beautiful but if you if you type gaia ely e-l-y cathedral you'll see photos too and there's like the you know there's a youtube clip and all the rest of it um so 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 we've had an amazing weekend and why do i mention this i've forgotten um uh, oh yes t.s Eliot, saturday um a condition of complete simplicity and if I am to be true to myself, I have to say that I want to follow the song of the blackbird. And that is a song that is urging me towards silence, towards being still, towards being quiet, 
and towards a kind of deepening and a going inwards, which, you know, in, in, in the picture, I guess, is symbolized by the, the cave there. And so to be true to myself, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to have a break in, in doing these teas, say until the end of August, I think it's about six weeks. Um, and nothing in life is kind of relentlessly continuous. So, so we're up to, you know, 186 of these. So, and I haven't done them all, but, 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 you know, it, it, it's quite hard. You know, I used to say to myself, well, it's okay. You can go into the cave. You can go in deep, 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 and then just come out for 20 minutes on a, on a Monday evening. And you know, that, that's no big deal. And that's the least you can do and, and so on. But I'd actually, I feel a real need now to go in and not to have to come out, uh, even if it's for 20 minutes on a Monday evening. So I hope you understand. Um, I, uh, I, I enjoy these teas so much. And, and, you know, one of the troubles is if I do come out on a Monday evening, I want to stay out. You know, why wouldn't I want to be with you and to be sharing with you and to be reading all your lovely comments and, uh, you know, all these wonderful things. You know, Helen is saying, I'm, you know, I'm focused on Qigong and yoga and take, you know, why wouldn't I want to be with lots of people, wonderful people who are kind of following, who are on the same page and, you know, who, who want to be doing the same things. But, but what I, you know, if I'm going to be completely honest, what I have to say is that, 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 you know, I just want to, to be quiet and to, to, to go towards a condition of, of, of simplicity for, you know, at least until the beginning of September. Um, so let's, let's go into a meditation now. Let's be together in a, a time of simplicity. And I've got, a, I've got a blackbird song, which I'll play in the background. And, and may the blackbird lead us into this place of simplicity. Uh, and so let's have a little meditation for a few minutes. Um, so you might like to become aware of yourself being seated in front of your computer, your laptop or your screen, fully present here and now. And as you allow yourself just to be fully present here and now, you can perhaps relax and let go in the comfort of knowing that you're fully present and at the same time able to allow your awareness to fade of this, of, of being in front of the computer, to sense yourself being in the sacred grove, coming into a clearing in a forest filled with life, filled with beauty. And there's a little blackbird sitting in the trees and you sense the earth beneath you. Oh no. Which one of these foods contains a I do you know I had an intuition that might happen that some YouTube ad might come on on that. I'm so sorry if that was a YouTube ad. Let's allow our Oh no the blackbirds come back. I want to stop it. I don't know. Stop it. We'll just we'll just listen to this blackbird for a few moments. And then We'll, <laughs> we'll stay in our sacred grove, just sensing the earth beneath us, bringing us stability and healing and strength. So good to be on the earth. So good that it's there to hold us. Even when we feel like falling, even when we want to just let go completely, we can do that because we can let go and let go and the earth holds us. And just opening to this sense of the earth holding us and feeding us with energy and with love. We become aware of the roots of the trees sinking deep into the earth. 
and drawing moisture up. And we feel these trees anchored in the earth and their strong trunks rising up, creating this lovely circle of protection, of strength and of connection for us to the earth beneath us and the sky above us. And we give thanks to our brothers and sisters, the trees, for being with us. And we become aware of their branches and their leaves high in the air. And we become aware of the sky above us. And we breathe in the energy of the sky. The energy of the sky meeting the energy of the earth within the center of our beings. And just being seated here in this forest clearing, you might like to invite a bird to come and sit on a branch. And it might be a blackbird or it could be another bird. And just if a bird wants to come, just to allow that bird to be with you and to sing to you. And for you to appreciate its being, its presence. Just to be with this bird, hearing its song. And just being in the presence of this bird, just having it near you, feels like a blessing. And as it starts to take off from its branch now and fly higher up into the trees, see if you can catch the caress of the wind from the bird's flight on your face. And feel that caress as a blessing, a blessing that the bird is giving, giving to you so lightly, so gently. And this, and then just being seated in the grove, just being aware of how there's nothing you need at this exact moment. All you need to do is just be. And then reaching out and touching the earth, placing your palms on the earth, feeling your love of the earth, your love of the trees around you, of the birds and the animals in the trees and the forest. And then you lift your palms up and bring them to your heart. There's a way in which in doing that, it's as if you're bringing your love of all this life, of all these creatures, of all of nature, into your heart, connecting you, bringing you a sense of connection to all of nature at the very deepest level of your being. And as you do that, you take in a big deep breath, hold for a moment, and then let out fully and deeply. And as you do that, you allow your awareness of being in the sacred grove to fade 
as you become aware of being seated here, fully present here and now. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes. Well, thank you for uh, being here. Isn't it funny how we get these, you know, it's like just before I put it on, a little kind of voice said to me, there's going to be some ad on that because I found an hour of Blackbird song on YouTube and I thought I'll just play it on my phone and we'll have it in the background. In fact, I played it on the invitation to this tea and it worked fine. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Um, somebody was offering a cure for arthritis. Maybe we should listen to it. Um, so um, thank you for your lovely messages. It's very sweet of you to um, read. Somebody had a dream of a blackbird last night. That's great. Uh, and, you know, the lovely thing with the, you know, with the animals is the blackbird might be speaking to you. Sometimes I'll draw it and it'll be the salmon and it'll be all about wisdom, seeking wisdom. At other times, you know, the stag and it'll be about you know, dignity and respect and those sorts of things. And so um, have have a really good rest of the summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or uh, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, it's winter time now. And um, I sincerely hope that I will be back. Uh, I think it's the 6th of September, the first Monday in September. Um, and just have a really good few uh, weeks. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again in, 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 in September, unless I decide that for some reason the, this, this is a cycle that's complete and, and uh, you know, we don't, it's, it's not necessary to do this anymore. Uh, but I, I do hope to be back. That's the plan at the moment anyway. Okay, so lots and lots of love, many blessings, and I really look forward to reading all your all your comments when I come back here with a cup of tea. Okay, bye everybody. Bye.